Okay, the 2008 BC number six, uh, probably one of the easier number sixes in recent years, if you consider 2008 recent. Uh, we have a logistic differential equation. Um, they give you an initial condition f of zero is eight for the function f. Uh, and I prefer my logistic equations to look a little bit different than this. Some teachers teach this as a standard form. I prefer my logistic models to look like this. So dy dt, I'm going to factor that six out. And so that'll be three fourths y times one minus y over six. And the reason I do that is because if it's logistic, that number, when I have it to one minus dependent variable over constant, that constant is the carrying capacity. And if you know the carrying capacity, that can be used in a logistic model to know what the population, it's usually a population, they don't tie this to a population, um, capacity. You, if you know the carrying capacity, you know that the, the, the function or the population will approach six as t goes to infinity. Also, you know that the, uh, the rate of growth is fastest at half carrying capacity. So, so at when y is equal to three, this, uh, this model will be increasing the fastest. So, so I like to identify the carrying capacity. Um, all that time wasted because I don't think it comes into play in any of these questions. So part A is really easy. They give you a slope field and they want you to sketch possible solution curves through the points three, two and zero, eight. And for those of you who don't know how to plot points, they were even nice enough to put those points here. So uh, I'll start here at zero, eight, and I am starting with a negative slope. So I'm gonna decrease, and then we will level off as we approach that carrying capacity, the equilibrium solution at x equals uh, y equals six. And then at three, two, I always start my solutions at the point I'm starting by increasing. And then I'm going to level off as I get to that carrying capacity. And then I'm going to go back to my point and then work my way left. And we will level off at zero as well. So that's all there is to part A. Part B is a, an Euler's method problem. And I am a fan of doing Euler's, Euler, Euler's method with a table. And so I'm going to make myself a nice little table here. And what I know is that I am starting at the point. So we have values of T and we have values of Y. I'm starting at the point zero eight because we're approximating F of one. So zero eight. Um, and I'm sorry. I, my mind is running all over the place here. Okay, so I'm using two steps and I want to get to a T value of one. So that's where I want to finish, which means I'm going to have to step my T's up in increments of 0.5. Um, and so my delta T is 0.5. And so what I need to know now is what is my delta Y? How much do my Y's increase? And I get my delta Y by moving my DT in the differential equation to the other side. And so dy represents your change in y is y over eight times six minus y times your dt, but we know that dt is 0.5. And then I like to put another column in my table. I'll fill that column in in a minute. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my first delta y, and that's gonna be when I plug in eight for y. So eight divided by eight is one, six minus eight is negative two times 0.5, and that'd be negative one. And so what I like to do now is I like to say that my new y coordinate is my old y coordinate plus my newly found delta y. So eight plus my negative one gives me a new y of seven. And then I'm going to plug that Y in here. So we have seven eighths. I need to get my delta Y for Y being seven times six minus seven is going to be negative. Whoops. Forgot my delta T. Oh, why did I undo all that? Seven eighths times six minus seven, which is negative one times my delta T, which is 0.5. I'm going to change that to one half because now I can get that as negative seven over 16. And so uh, my new y is seven minus seven over 16. And because I don't want to hurt myself getting a common denominator, this is a non-calculator question. That is my approximate value of y when t is one. So now I can say that by Euler's method, f of one is going to be approximately 
7 minus 7 sixteenths. And there is all of your work for the Euler's method problem. I'm going to shrink this up, group, and give myself a little bit of room for part C. Uh, now, typically on the BC exam, part C is a full uh, series question. Uh, this year, only, I'm sorry, say part C. Number six is a full series question. This year, only part C was. They want the second degree Taylor polynomial for f about zero and use it to approximate f of one. So to get that second degree Taylor polynomial, I'll need f of zero, which they told me was eight. I'll need f prime of zero, which would be my derivative at eight. And I actually did that in my Euler's method up here. When I plugged in eight to my derivative, I got, oh, I forgot to move that dt over. Okay, so I'm going to do this. So f prime of zero, I'm going to plug eight here. So eight over eight is one. Six minus eight is negative two. And so that's just negative two. I almost chose negative one. I almost chose negative one from that table, but that did factor in the delta t, which is not here. Uh, and then I'm going to need to find f double prime of zero, which we don't have yet. So to get f double prime of zero, I will need to find the derivative of my differential equation. And so my differential equation, dy dt, was um, y over eight times six minus y. And as that is written, it is a product rule and I really don't wanna do a product rule. So I'm going to distribute that y and only the y to get six y minus y squared, make the derivative a little bit easier. Um, so my second derivative, d squared y over dt squared would be one eighth. And then here's where you have to be careful. Uh, y is, or dy dt is a function of y. This is an implicit derivative to get to our second derivative here. So it's gonna be six dy dt. The derivative of y squared is two y dy dt. And then I need to evaluate this at the point zero eight. So um, d squared y dt squared. And uh, this is only when, well, I'll say at the point zero eight. At the point zero eight is going to be one eighth of six dy dt, but we know that dy dt is negative two. So I'm not going to plug in the full equation. I'm just gonna take advantage of the fact that I know that dy dt is negative two. So six times negative two, minus 2y, which is 8, dy dt is still negative 2. And then we will clean that up. And so that's going to be 1 8 of negative 12 plus 32. Is that right? Yep. And so that's 20 over 8. And 4 goes in each of those, that'd be 5 halves. So I finally have f double prime of zero being five halves. Um, and that's definitely the hard part. That is definitely gonna be the hardest part of this one. Now, I, now that I have those three values, I can very quickly spit out my second degree Taylor polynomial. Move my head out a little here. And so my second degree Taylor polynomial for f, so f would be approximately f of zero plus f prime of zero over one factorial times x minus zero to the first plus f double prime of zero, five halves, over two factorial times x minus zero squared. And then it says use that to approximate f of one. So f of one is going to be approximately eight minus two times one plus, and that will be five fourths times one squared. And I would stop there and I'll leave that for the graders to grade. However, um, I am going to clean this up in my mind, maybe on scratch paper and then erase it just to see one thing. So eight minus two is six plus five fourths. Um, six, uh, that'd be 29 fourths, which is going to be seven and one fourth. Okay, the only reason I wanted to do that, and I, I would scratch that out so the reader doesn't read it. So I got seven and one fourth, but the reason I wanted to do that is because I wanted to compare it to 
the Euler's approximation in part B to see if they're in the same ballpark because we were using valid approximation approaches to estimate the same point and seven minus seven sixteenths is going to be what six and uh, nine sixteenths. That's pretty close to, to seven and one fourth. It's not way, way, way off. Um, they're, they're in that same ballpark. So I feel good about both of those approximations. That said, once I do that to check the reasonableness, <laughs> words, uh, I would then scratch that out because I don't want to run the risk of me having messed that up. And because it is scratched out, now the reader will go back to the previous step and that's what they're going to grade. Uh, and then part B is a really easy question. Uh, it says, what is the range of F for T is greater than or equal to zero? And here I'm actually going to go back to that slope field part A and you have to be careful because we have two curves and one curve the range of this one uh, is from 0 to 8. Remember, we're talking about the y coordinates. And then for the top one, the range, uh, we started at 8 and it comes down to 6. Uh, so we actually would say 6 to 8. And you have to be very careful with this one because a lot of people want to say 0 to 8 on this range part for part D. However, the function f, where's my pen? My function f is defined where, where is my, what's my pen doing? He's not writing. There he is. Um, they do define f to have the condition f of zero is eight. So f is the top curve. The bottom curve, they never identified. They never called it g or anything like that. So, so the range of f is actually, um, it's leveling off at six and then the highest it gets is eight. And so for part b, you would say the range is six to eight and you are done.